join me, I'll give you a note to join in. So if you guys all sing, There's a song that the horse people like to dance to. Um, actually, we need to clear all of this space so there can't be any people in the aisles because maybe the horse people will come. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's going to actually, yeah, uh, any, yeah, beautiful. Maybe a tiny bit more space. No legs. Otherwise, I might get trampled by golden hoops. <laughs> um, okay, so if you guys want to join me, there's a very simple song that the horse people like listening to, and they dance a lot to it. So it goes, horse people, horse people, horse people, horse people. Okay, do you have that? Okay, I, look, I'm dressed as a horse so that they know I'm their friend. So, okay, are you, and I'll bring you in for harmonies as well, so keep your ears open. So, um, horse Horse people, 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 horse
Sweet Choir, where it's renowned. Actually, them singing was listed as too good for Broadway. <laughs> so, we have a very special surprise. Somebody in the audience has received a golden ticket. Has been, has, it's written on the back of your ticket. So if you have a look at your ticket, you might notice that you... You've got it! Okay, you are summoned. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, great. So, the usual. Hello, what's your name, Horse Queen? Tam. Tam. So, we're about to do the most incredible equinox, equine ritual. And usually, what happens is, um, a horse from the other world will marry a human from this world and they'll be crowned the queen of the equinox or the equinox esquilax um, and so there's a special place over here which are the thrones for the horse queen and queen beside the feathery branches if you're sitting in a throne you can't sit there anymore <laughs> Um, yes. So um, you're about to be crowned the queen of the evening, and I made you a very special crown, which is the ritual crown. It's made out of carrots. ceremony whereby the, the queen and the horsey bride will be married for one year and one day until the next equinox at Esquilax is crowned. Um, and so maybe this um, okay so I'm just gonna get you to hold hands okay. and repeat after me snout to snout oh no wait sorry I'm wrong okay um, <laughs> Hoof to hoof, <laughs> and snout to snout, <laughs> our love runs deep, until life runs out.
Good evening, fellow humans. My name is Mr. Marmalade. I will be your magnificently mustachioed master of ceremonies, your compote compare beyond compare, here to guide you through the bizarre little world that we have created. If your boozles are unbammed, you are in the right place. We have the clubs of life. From the streets of Bogota, Colombia, Andre Duke has made the traffic lights of the world his stage with the intriguing ability to juggle almost anything one might be able to throw and giving life to the commuters along Bell Street. Please, welcome to the stage, Andre Duke. <laughs>
That was that was a brand new one. That was incredible. <laughs> Apparently, there's this dude, Jeremiah Rose, and he's made his own electric trumpet.
interrupt this carnival for a very important announcement that in the throes of the Corsi Opera, I forgot to say. So, um, we would like to pay our respects to the traditional owners of this land on which we play, perform, and create. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and rightfully belongs to the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. And once again, we apologize for not beginning the evening in this way. Mummy Mustache. House of Mustache invites you to question everything. <laughs> and nothing, oh. And all that lies between blending storytelling, drag, and twisted performance art, Mummy and Monsieur tap deeply into the fabric of the universe and then tear at a new one. Mm. Sea cry. All right. <clears throat> With only a handful of tickets left to their Melbourne Fringe show, tonight's performance is an exclusive treat for all who dwell at the carnival of the impossible. Which is you guys. Please make very welcome to the stage, Mummy Mustache. Have you seen this? Keep stepping on me. Hi, how are you? You look absolutely fucking gorgeous, by the way. So, for those who haven't met me yet, or maybe have but can't remember, maybe in a past life, I am Mummy. And I'm just going to read you a little bedtime story tonight, and I hope you like it. <laughs> and I might have to support my mic the entire time I do it as well. Round. So, oh, thank you, Heather. <laughs> you can just stay there the whole time if you like. I quite like it. Perfect. Can you hear us? Can you hear us all right? Okay, so this is a story written by me and it is called The Critter by Mummy. Once upon a time, there was a critter. This critter was very special and totally average. Their decisions were incredibly important and had no real impact at all. The critter looked up at the stars and felt very, very small. The critter looked down at the ants and felt very, very big. Their thoughts were completely unoriginal, but they were also revolutionary. This critter is one of a kind, and there are nearly eight billion other critters. The critter exists thanks to some nifty evolution. The chance of the critter existing was one in, and I've written a number here, and it's based like one in like 10 with then um, two million zeros after it. It's a lot, it wasn't likely to happen basically. We're all very lucky to exist. Highly improbable. But it was also entirely inevitable. The critter lived in a city with lots of other critters. Critter was alone within their mind. Critter was a good critter. <coughs> and critter sometimes did bad things. The critter knew that it would die one day, but tried not to think about it too much. The critter had a sense of knowing. And the critter had many questions. One day, Critter met Mummy. Critter asked, Is this the afterlife? Mummy smiled and said, 
not quite, but vibes. What happens when I die? Well, you'll come back to me for a little bit. Then you'll be born again as a different critter, fresh and new. You won't remember a thing. Critter looked confused and a little bit sad. But what's the point then? What's the point of this whole thing if I'm only going to forget it all anyway? Mummy said, well, if you stayed here with me long enough, you'd remember it all eventually, but we haven't got any time for that. There are plenty of lives to be getting on with. There'll be plenty of time to remember all of your lives much, much later. How many lives do I have to have? asked Critter. Mummy smiled. All of them. The longer they were with Mummy, the more they began to understand. Well, what's my next life then? I couldn't tell you. You might be Trump. You might be your grandma. You might be a homeless man in 1920s New York. You might be a Mayan king. But Chris is stammered. If I have to be all of them, doesn't that mean that I was or will be Hitler? Yes, Mary said. But remember, you are also Gandhi. My dear, darling Krita, Mummy loves you deeply. And I've got to leave the stage again soon. <laughs> but try to remember, as you move through this life, as this Krita, to treat others with love. Because you'll have to be them again someday. That's my story. Well, that just br that brings us to uh, intermission, and you can also uh, be t swept away by the dulcet tunes of the house band. Thank you. 